south of the border, teams of American DEA agents risk their lives in a war against billion dollar drug cartels. They're stealth. We haven't seen vessels like this ever. Ingenious. He had swallowed 100 pellets, adding up to a kilo. And willing to risk it all. People in the boat have jumped out. To smuggle their stash into the U.S. There's a lot of money there. It's the ultimate cat and mouse game. There he is. You are not telling us the truth. That's our guy out front holding the baby. To stop the flow of coke before it hits American shores. El Dorado International Airport, Bogota, Colombia. This facility services 52,000 passengers a day on flights heading to nearly every major city on Earth. About half of the world's cocaine comes from Colombia. Much of it passes through here, carried in the bellies or baggage of cocaine mules. Drug couriers often desperate and poor, who risk all for a few thousand bucks to move product north. The offer of five to $10,000 is a lot of money. You know, that's a, over a year's salary for some of these people for just making one flight. <laughs> Their stealth techniques are constantly evolving. Hunting the mules is DEA's Columbia-based airport interdiction team, Special Agents Liam and Jack. These guys absolutely fear us. They know that DEA is present here. Their goal, to not only stop the mules, but to turn them into snitches who can lead DEA to cartel bosses higher up the chain. Jack and Liam's latest intel suggests one or two mules may be boarding an international flight. For fear of alerting the mules, DEA and the camera crew must remain hidden from view behind one-way security glass. The mules have lookouts and informants all over the airport. One warning call, and they'll simply vanish back onto the street. At the gates, a Colombian man boarding an overseas flight is pulled out of the line. Like all suspects, he's sent to El Dorado's full body scan facility. If there are cocaine pellets in his body, this state-of-the-art x-ray system paid for by American tax dollars will find them. See? So he's swallowed cocaine. It's a perfect circular form right here. When we have a swallower, I always assume 100 of these little pellets are in his stomach, and each pellet has 10 grams, adding up to a kilo. A lot of times I wrap these pellets in latex gloves or condoms. ¿Cómo se llama usted? Si necesitas algo, me avisas. Es que te van a llevar a un hospital y usted va a tener que expulsar. Whoever is the owner of the drugs that's inside of him has told him not to eat anything because it could aggravate. Uh, the pellets that are inside and cause one of them to, uh, to explode, which would cause a, a, him a massive heart attack. At any minute, this man could die of an overdose. But what he fears most is retaliation by the drug traffickers who sent him. Like all swallowers, he's taken to a hospital where he'll spend the next 20 hours under guard, expunging the pellets from his body. 
After that, two to three years in a Colombian prison await. With the stakes running into the billions, cocaine traffickers will risk getting caught and move the drug any way they can. In the Central Caribbean, a 40-foot cigarette boat speeds through the night. Its cargo, nearly two tons of pure Colombian cocaine. Street value, $300 million. DEA calls them go-fasts. They saw that the US government was cracking down on, on planes, and they've decided to go maritime. They'll come up from Colombia or Venezuela, and all they have is just full of dope and, and fuel. That's right. At full throttle, they can hit speeds of 100 miles an hour and outrun every cop and Coast Guard vessel they see. Most go fast never reach American shores. They don't have to. The Dominican Republic is close enough. This island of 10 million people is like a cocaine shipping center. The Dominican Republic plays a huge role in the drug trade because it's a catapult from, from Colombia to the Dominican Republic, Dominican Republic into the United States. From here, drug traffickers could send their product to cities up and down the eastern seaboard. When a brick of coke hits Puerto Rico, Miami, or New York, its price instantly jumps. You move a kilo that's worth $9,000 here to New York at $35,000, you just made a huge, huge profit. Cocaine wealth is quickly transforming this once remote paradise into a drug trafficker's dream. Chasing down go fast here is a small elite DEA team. Special Agents Tony, Kojak, and Matt, along with dedicated local Dominican officers. Their latest case began when a go-fast was tracked off the coast here several months ago. They came in on a boat. Our guys went there, and they seized uh, 616 kilos. At that time, there was two bodies arrested. Now the rest of the guys that are still at large are planning the same operation with the intended destination of the drugs to go to Puerto Rico. We're hoping to disrupt that pretty soon. The ocean here is vast. Luckily, DEA isn't the only group searching these waters. A Customs and Border Protection P3 is tracking a go-fast packing more than a ton of cocaine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely four engines. Definitely a lot of stuff in the boat. The pilots get lucky. A local police boat shows up to assist, and the chase is on. The good guy boat is shining a spotlight on the bad guy boat off and on, okay? Okay. Soon, the bad guys start dumping bales. Looks like he might be dumping some more stuff here, yep. 11, 12. This guy's gonna beat here pretty soon, I think. Okay, yep, the, the people on the boat have jumped out. When the cops get too close, the go-fast crew jumps overboard at high speed. With no one at the wheel, the out-of-control drug speedboat slams into a seaside village. Seconds later, the villagers flock to the boat to loot it of its remaining cocaine. Down the beach, the GoFast crew makes it ashore and runs for cover. The police boat beaches itself, and the cops pursue. The fact that the cops manage to even get close to the bad guys makes it a rare event. And for the DEA, they only have a handful of agents in the Dominican Republic, and local resources are slim. 
so catching the next incoming go fast won't be easy. It's so hard to be able to catch these people in action. We'd have to have assets in the water, in the air, on land. That's why it's so difficult for us. But one asset they do have on their side is the wiretap. At the command post, DEA agents and their local counterparts listen in on the bad guys. We're going to go fast that we'll deport Cartagena. It should be a couple of days, they're only waiting for the agents. A wiretap intercepts critical intel. Ready to roll. A go-fast captain will soon load up massive amounts of cocaine and be on his way. Tony and his team will suit up and try to capture the load before it embarks. And in Bogota, Special Agents Liam and Jack get a huge lead of their own. That's a home run. That could help bring down an entire drug ring. At the El Dorado Airport in Bogota, DEA's Columbia-based airport interdiction team More white powder coming out. continues to wage war against the drug cartels. There you got a positive for cocaine. Many of the mules arrested here are homegrown. But this week, Special Agents Liam and Jack are tracking a smuggling ring made up of fellow Americans. U.S. servicemen have been moving coke from Bogota to towns near their former military bases in Italy. We wanted to show our Colombian counterparts that we were going to go after Americans who violate their law just as hard as we go after the Colombians. At the U.S. Embassy in Bogota, Liam and Jack listen in on wiretaps in a secure room and dial in on the ringleader, a retired U.S. sailor based in Colombia named Wally. He is definitely higher level. He's called himself a cocaine cowboy over the phone intercepts. The wiretaps reveal that Wally's about to send out his next American mule a guy they only know as Sam. Intel leads them to Sam's Facebook page and confirms a critical fact. Sam is already in Colombia and likely preparing to serve as the ring's next mule north. Let's just pull the passenger manifest on that flight and then we'll go through for see if anybody named Sam's on there. And if there's a Sam on it, that's a, that's a home run. I'll right. take a look. All right, sounds good. All right. Two days later, Liam and Jack fly from El Dorado to Cali International Airport. They're hoping to meet up with Sam, the American mule, who could lead them to the big boss, Wally. The object of any DEA investigation is to go as high up the food chain as you can, all the way to the guy who calls all the shots, who is financing the organizations, the guy who's living the fattest. That's the guy you want to go after. By late afternoon, the agents are staked out and waiting for Sam. From what we understand, he's gonna carry a hiker's backpack. We believe he's gonna try to carry maybe two plus kilos uh, from Cali to Madrid. Intel indicates that he's about to purchase a ticket for a flight later tonight. And this mule is supposedly transporting liquefied cocaine in whiskey bottles. Liquid coke is a fairly new trick of the drug smuggling trade and incredibly difficult to detect. It's easy to conceal. Yeah, we're always impressed by the methods they use. That's him. That's our passenger. Eduardo. Ya llegó o no? The outside surveillance is reporting them so they okay. even spotted the mule. The one-way glass gives Liam and Jack front row seats to the main security checkpoint. A minute later, Sam appears. There he is. He's waiting, got his arms crossed. 
it's him. He successfully passes through x-ray screening and the drug filter. It's coming out. Yeah. Good to go. If Liam and Jack can arrest this mule, he may divulge information about his ringleader, and they could bring down the entire operation. I mean, these moments might only happen with for us, what, once every six months, maybe a year. Yeah. This is kind of a rare moment. It doesn't happen every day, not like on TV. Take it to the next level, baby. We're going. Sam has been pulled from the plane, and authorities get ready to search his bags. Bad news. Inside the backpacks, Colombian cops find no liquor bottles or liquid cocaine. What if that rope could be impregnated? It very well could be. I don't know. Sergeant Rico from the Colombian National Police picked it up and he immediately was like, this is too heavy. Uh, he started manipulating it and it just didn't feel like a rappel rope. Gotta have liquid, liquid cocaine. Yeah, that's a hit. When the test kit turns blue, it's positive for cocaine. This whole rope has got cocaine in it. The rope is holding about 11 pounds. Street value, nearly a quarter million dollars. Do you have any idea what's going on? I had no idea. I just thought that was a rope. You didn't know? I did not Where'd know. Where'd you get the rope? I didn't get this. Somebody gave me this bag. Walk with us. Now. Liam and Jack will work to flip Sam and find out who's funding the ring back in the U.S. What can you tell us about this rope in his bag? I can't tell you nothing. Is this your bag? No, it's not. Can you tell me why you're taking a bag that isn't yours? I was just bringing it to somebody. Who? I don't know their name. Did you come to the airport by yourself tonight? I got dropped off. By who? Um, the dude, well, I, I don't know the guy who gave me a ride. Yeah, can I, I can I stop you right there? Mm -hmm. You are absolutely not telling us the truth. Liam and Jack give Sam every chance to come clean, but he remains loyal to his organization. I think we're done. Yeah, I think we're done. And could face up to 10 years in jail. That's the worst, absolutely the worst interview anyone has ever given. I've never seen anyone be so evasive. Sam won't snitch, but they've gotten something nearly as good, his cell phone. It yields a printout of all the numbers he's called, numbers DEA will tap for leads that will hopefully bring down the entire organization. About a thousand miles away, in the waters surrounding the Dominican Republic, go fast, move coke at such high speed, they rarely get caught. But this DEA team is on the trail of the latest drug run. Special agents Tony and Kojak get word that a cocaine speedboat they've been tracking is heading this way. Oh, yeah, All right, ready to roll? The GoFast captain is planning to make landfall and deliver his cocaine within the hour. We've already identified the actual locations where these guys intend to bring the drugs in. The team heads out to a remote landing beach where the GoFast crew plans to dump the coke and their accomplices will load the drugs into waiting SUVs. We know for a fact they have weapons. We know for a fact there's at least 18 or 20 members. So yeah, there's a high risk. Guys, you need to move fast, all right? Move fast. All right, this is the staging location. Darken that I thought. We know they're communicating because of, because of the wiretap intercept we have. We're waiting for the phone calls telling us that the drug operation is underway. Intercepts reveal that the GoFast is floating just off the beach, waiting for their accomplices on land to show up. Like a Mansi right now. 
Where are those phone calls? Where are the smoke signals? The cops want to take down the GoFast crew and the buyers coming to pick up the coke. With millions of dollars and their freedom at risk, the bad guys may fight to keep their stash. DEA wouldn't stand a chance without the men of the Dominican Sensitive Investigation Unit backing them up. For added firepower, four soldiers from a nearby military post join in. The smugglers are notorious for opening fire on police. These agents' lives are on the line. Somebody's watching us right now. Our adrenaline was pumping. On a remote Dominican Republic beach, DEA special agents, local police and military are attempting to take down an armed cocaine go-fast crew and their buyers. Suddenly, an intercept comes in, and it's not the news they expected. We intercepted a phone call. A bad guy warning the other bad guys there was some law enforcement presence nearby and not to drive the vehicles right to the beach. The buyers have been tipped off and won't be coming. Their only chance to catch the boat crew before they reload the coke and head back out to sea is now. Come on, let's go, let's go. When the jungle opens up, they get the first glimpse of their prey. The go fast is still there sitting just 60 feet off the beach. A police chopper swoops in, spooking the crew into a desperate move. They're jumping in the water, okay. Viene, viene, viene. A frantic search for the bad guys ensues. It's unclear if the GoFast crew swam out to sea or are trying to sneak onto the beach. You see? I heard something. I heard something too. The drug smugglers are hiding in the brush. I heard something, man. Almost certainly armed and dangerous. Dude, do we have any canine units in here? It's a tense search. An agent spots movement in the undergrowth. Well, he was the first one to see him. And he's like, I think they're over there. 10 minutes after discovering the empty boat, its crew is finally taken into custody with no shots fired. They're Venezuelan, tired, thirsty, and unarmed. But there's still a problem. The go fast is empty, and there's no sign of any coke. We start saying, we're like, dude, where's the dope? And next thing you know, one of the guys says, what is that over there? Good job, guys. That was right under your nose. <laughs> Get your ass over here. That's a good one, bro. Get your ass over here. <laughs> Yo, check, chill, chill, chill. Clear the Holy area. Clear the area. Look at all the right here, bro. Holy There's bales out the ass here, bro. For each bale, it's 30 kilos. From the looks of it, they've seized over a ton of Colombian cocaine. Getting a good seizure, that, that's like finding, better than finding gold. It's like a little boy or girl finding their most precious Christmas present under the Christmas tree. They won't know just how successful the haul is until the amount can be weighed. For now, agents inspect the boat for evidence. This is the boat they used uh, to bring the, the kilos in the air from Colombia. They soon discover why the bad guys didn't head back out to sea after the cops showed up. They ran out of gas, and they decided to, to refuel, wait until, yeah. until somebody came back with some more gas for them. So well, we beat them to it, so we beat them to that. That was a good hit, bro. In the morning, they realize their victory. Their go-fast bust was the biggest in Dominican Republic history. It's 
One for the U.S., you know what I mean? One for the DEA. <laughs> and tomorrow, the war goes on. With potential billions to be made, drug traffickers keep inventing ingenious methods to get the job done. One of their most elusive is the cocaine submarine. This is something absolutely new. We haven't seen vessels like this ever. These covert vehicles are built by hand in remote jungles and travel the seas carrying tons of coke. When the DEA caught their first one, they knew it would be a game changer. Well, now you're talking about something that can go beneath the water to avoid detection. That does ratchet it up a lot. It is a different, all new threat. But lately, the coke subs seem to be disappearing. DEA and Colombian anti-narcotics forces have gone from catching almost one a month to just two in the past two years. Are narco submarines being used at this particular time? Oh, well, that remains to be seen. There is a gap in seizures of the narco submarines. We know these organizations can build them, uh, but the sightings, uh, just like Bigfoot, are, are rare. So, where are all the coke subs? Have cartels abandoned this mode of smuggling altogether? Or have they designed a stealthier approach to underwater trafficking? To find out, a specialized team of DEA sub hunters is on the prowl. Special Agents Tony, Sam, and Jay, led by DEA Team Commander Ivan. It's a dangerous job. It's not a group of individuals. It's a team of agents all working towards uh, the same mission. These sub hunters search extremely remote territory, guarded by terrorists who are prepared to kill. It's a dangerous quest to find the elusive Coke subs. This is Cartagena, Colombia, DEA's main base for cocaine sub hunting. Its location sits perfectly between Colombia's Caribbean and Pacific coasts. The idea was to collect all of the maritime intelligence in one spot. From here, a team of special agents is in striking distance of the two ocean corridors a coke sub could use to glide toward North American shores. After months of silence, a cocaine submarine is back on the wire. Hey boss, how you doing? Special Agent Jay has uncovered the target. Intel suggests it might be a design they've never seen before. So right here in, in this area here of Nariño, we have a fully constructed submersible. Uh, it's gonna be moved the next couple of days. We're looking anywhere between five to seven uh, tons of cocaine. The sub lies deep in a mangrove swamp along the southwestern coast, a place cops rarely go. It's protected by the FARC. Okay, all right. The FARC is an infamous group. The FARC uh, stands for the Fuerzas Armadas Revolucionarias de Colombia, which is a, uh, it's a terrorist organization dedicated to the overthrow of the government of Colombia. They are a criminal drug trafficking organization, and they, they are directly associated with the manufacturing and transportation of significant loads of cocaine. A narco sub potentially packed with a quarter billion dollars worth of coke isn't something they'll easily give up. These organizations are highly motivated not to lose that money. You have to be prepared to go in there with a lot of men and a lot of ammunition. More often than none, uh, there's confrontational and uh, our men are, are met with gunfire. Jay's informant is already at the sub site, but finding him is going to be a huge challenge. That area that they're in is, uh, is a no man's land. It's almost impossible unless you know exactly where it is to find anything out there. What they'll do is they'll use some of the, the, the brush to lay over canopies and, and tarp over their, their work. It's extremely difficult to enter. It's extremely difficult to see via airplanes. It's extremely difficult to see via satellite imagery. They need to move quickly. They have to catch this sub before it sails. Otherwise, it'll be as good as gone. The next morning, 
Jay and Sam join their Colombian counterparts at the mission launch site. You ready? Yeah. The boat ride to the sub's location takes four hours, much of it through FARC-controlled terrain. This is probably the most dangerous uh, area in whole Colombia. Soon, they approach the mangrove labyrinth. The, uh, the traffickers take advantage of the, the natural uh, obstacles and, uh, and barriers. It takes about all day to, to be able to get into one of these. Someone's trying to conceal this tributary entrance with felled trees. Making it through this obstacle course is just the beginning. The estuary divides, leading into a larger river. This is by far the most dangerous moment for DEA and the cops. The FARC is out here. Safety is always at stake. If they're ambushed now, it'll be nearly impossible to even see the enemy. DEA agents Sam and Jay believe they're on the trail of a fully submersible cocaine submarine. But this southwestern region of Colombia is dominated by FARC. Terrorists who could be hiding, ready to pull the trigger. There's a lot at stake. Security is paramount. Uh, the, these clandestine shipyards are gonna be armed. As they enter a jungle clearing, they discover the elusive prey they've been hunting for months. It's a semi-submersible, not the fully submersible vessel they were hoping for, but still a major find. You can see how high the tide goes up here. You see how the, it's darker on the bottom then. That's how high it goes up, looks like. At least three or four feet. The agents see right away the drug lords have been revamping its design, making the sub even more difficult to detect. This sub has been built with mostly rounded edges and few right angles. Like a stealth bomber, this may ensure that radar beams can't bounce back to the sender. This is a brand new design, something that we haven't seen before. The twin engines are also unusual, giving the crew added speed, but making it unbearably hot when underway. It's very suffocating. The temperature in here is just uh, beyond imaginable. The front portion of the semi-submersible vessel allows for approximately eight to nine tons of cocaine. Blankets, food, and boots show signs that a sub crew was just here and may even be watching them from the surrounding jungle. Definitely somebody was, uh, was living in here guarding this place. You wanna come in here, dude? This is a payload. That's a little tight in there, no? The bad guys have made off with their dope, but the sub still offers up a treasure trove of evidence for DEA. We're getting the serial numbers. Those are uh, specially built. That can give us some uh, leads for uh, where these came from. This is, this is the end result of all the work. I'm glad we're here to uh, talk about it inside of this thing, instead of uh, it being another one we missed. The mystery over whether cartels continue to use semi-subs is, for now, solved. But as the cartels continue to evolve, so will their methods of transport. It's possible that even more undetectable methods will pop up soon. There's simply just no way of knowing. 
The construction of narco submarines is still sort of in its infancy stage uh, at this point. As long as they're making all this money and they can continue to innovate. It's one victory in a long fight. Like the cartels, DEA will also need to adapt and devise ways to keep these drug lords from moving their product to the U.S. Over 200 miles north, in Cali, Colombia, someone's plotting the next delivery of coke to the U.S. DEA intercepts the call. It's coming from one of the numbers they found on an American mule's cell phone. Cali, Miami. Pueden entrar y jugar, jugar con las sillas por las reservas. I just spoke to my analyst. Uh, there's an intercepted phone call from the American target to the head of the Colombian organization. And he told him that he's flying tomorrow at uh, 10, 15 in the morning. So uh, very good news. Wally, the ringleader, is coming out of hiding and set to board a plane for Miami. DEA makes a plan to bust him, his Colombian supplier, and all his associates in one fell swoop. Special Agent Carl is leading one of the Colombian strike teams. Um, they're locating a bunch of targets. They're going to be arrested uh, in Cali, Tuluá, and Buenaventura. The plan, Special Agents Jack and Liam will board Wally's flight to Miami, and Carl will set out with a commando team in Cali to take down the Colombian supplier. I think you're going to be on our main Colombian target with the uh, Colombian National Police. OK. So we'll just coordinate with the cops there, and I'll yeah. just give you any updates. Everything's riding on these busts happening simultaneously, so no one has the chance to escape. Once Wally is aboard the plane, he'll be trapped with his cell phone off, unable to warn the other members of his smuggling ring. When he takes that flight, that's going to trigger about five arrests. DEA is ready to put a major crackdown on Wally and his entire organization. It's time to take everybody down. Let's go, let's go. It's early morning. DEA special agents are ready to flip the switch on a big operation, taking down an entire drug smuggling ring made up of U.S. servicemen. Liam, Jack, and an NCIS agent named Barry stake out behind the one-way glass in Cali Airport, waiting for ringleader Wally to arrive. Unbeknownst to him, we'll be there watching him. Just last week, his drug mule Sam was busted here carrying a rope filled with liquid cocaine. Agents worry that might have scared him off. Yeah, here he is. It's been over an hour. Yep. But Wally finally shows up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a big boy. Yes. He's gonna break yes. bad on you, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> With Wally's arrival, Special Agent Carl and the strike team in Cali, Colombia get word to move into position. He just passed the inspection. He's going to be on the plane, and I'm going to be right next to him. OK, perfect. It's good to go. Yeah. Barry, Jack, and Liam prepare to board Wally's flight, posing as regular passengers. I'm ready, man. It's going to be a long flight. 15 miles away, the other half of DEA's sting operation is ready, too. Carl and the Colombian commando team make it to their position and suit up in one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in town. We've had surveillance on the location and know quite a bit about it, but you can't know everything about a location until you enter it. So you just go there with as many people as you have available just to keep everybody safe. We've arranged with the airline representative, and uh, they've got uh, our target sitting in the rear seat against the window. They've arranged, I think, for you to sit next to him. If you can maybe engage him in a little bit of casual conversation. No problem. As planned, 
Wally is assigned a seat next to Barry and right across the aisle from Liam. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has turned on the fastened seat belt sign. If you haven't already... With Wally in place and the plane doors shut, Liam gives Carl the green light to move in on the supplier's house. What's up, brother? Hey, man, we're good. To, yeah, we're good. We're good to go. You guys can move. But just as Liam hangs up on Carl, Wally is unexpectedly moved from his seat by a flight attendant. They, the flight attendants just changed the seat. Go, buy it, buy it, buy it. Our flight attendants are here to help. Please alert them if there is anything we can do to make your flight more comfortable. Sit back and enjoy the flight. Carl sticks to the plan. The whole neighborhood's about to hear what's happening. I think that's our guy out front holding the baby. The team is met with resistance from the family, but the supplier is remarkably calm. We rolled up, and uh, and the target was already out on the street. He was holding a, a child, so we'll just uh, go through this process. We just everybody else just covers their area, make sure there's no other threats or anything. In Miami, the plane lands, and DEA's operation is about to be put to the test. What we're concerned about is whether a guy's going to break bad on us. And that means he's going to fight. He's going to want to fight. It's go time. Sat right next to the target. My heart rate was up because you got to be ready, you know, if the guy's going to do a fight or flight or something. Wally, I'm a DEA special agent. I got a restaurant for you. So I need you to stay seated. told him who I was and that he needed to stay put. Instead of running or fighting, Wally's reaction is complete surrender. It all worked out in the end. On the streets of Cali, Carl's team cuffs the Colombian supplier without incident. Turned my phone on and the first message I got on my phone was uh, from Cali telling me that out of the five arrest warrants, they had arrested the five people, so. Good news. Obviously, the operation was successful, and everybody did it safely, so. No one got hurt. It's very good, yeah. This is a, Relief, always it's over. Yeah, always mm -hmm. the outcome you want. This entire Colombian drug ring has been taken down without a single shot fired. Very professional job by everyone in Colombia. A great job by NCIS backing us up on this case, and, uh, Thanks also to the guys here in the airport. A huge success, but as the criminals are taken off the streets, traffickers throughout Colombia continue to ship cocaine north. It's just the criminal aspect of the human person to make a buck. In go-fasts, subs, and through airports, fueling a violent, multi-billion dollar war. And the bad guys will keep devising new tricks slipping tons of coke north unseen. They don't rest on holidays, weekends, so neither do we. We need to bring them to justice. That's, that's the hard thing to do, and, and we do it well. <laughs> <laughs>